Hey guys, it's Shailen and I'm here today with another writing video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing another world building video and not really talking about necessarily the craft of world building, but talking about how at least I make and organize my world building Bible. So a world building Bible, if you aren't familiar with the term, is basically where uh, a writer who has, you know, any kind of heavy world building in their work, usually for speculative projects like sci-fi or fantasy, basically the idea is you organize all your world building notes in as organized and easy to access a way as possible so that you don't mix up information, you don't forget anything. World building can be somewhat of a Herculean task, you know, it does depend on the writer, but it can be a lot of information and so the idea is you just want to find a way of keeping track of everything. I'm really happy with the way that I've set up my world building bible. It's been really working for me so I wanted to share it with you guys. This is honestly the most like outliner planner thing I've ever done. I'm genuinely quite proud of myself as a real type B pantser, discovery writer, woo woo kind of writer. This is huge for me. I think I've set it up in a way that is organized and that I've managed to keep organized, which is the hard thing. I can organize things, but I cannot keep them organized. But I've managed to keep this organized, and so I think it is a system that works even if you are very organized. I realized that I needed a better system for this project because I wanted to create a larger world that I could write multiple smaller projects within, and so I realized that I was going to need a really good system that was going to keep things super, super organized because I was going to be developing this world over a really long period of time and the information wasn't just going to pertain to one project, it was going to pertain to a lot of projects. So I wanted a way that I could set up my world building that had all my notes for the individual stories in a way that was easily accessible with all my world building notes as well. So I use Microsoft OneNote for my world building bible. Um, it's worked really well for me. You could do the same thing in other programs, I'm sure. I know that Notion would work, Scrivener I assume would work. I picked OneNote because it's free. It had the features that I wanted and I also like that it has a desktop version and a mobile app. As someone who takes a lot of notes on my phone when I'm on the go, out of the house, about to fall asleep, I have a tendency to end up with just like super long, chaotic notes on the notes app on my phone and then every once in a while I have to migrate it all over. Instead, I've been able to just take my notes directly in the OneNote app which is great. Like early on when I just started working on this project and I was getting so many ideas, I was on a road trip with my family. During the road trip, I was getting so many ideas and I could just like write them directly in OneNote. Really my only complaint about OneNote is that it doesn't have a find and replace feature. So if you want to change the name of something, which for a fantasy writer, that happens. It's kind of a pain to do that. Otherwise, I've been really happy with it and it's been perfect for my needs as a writer. Basically what I was looking for was something that I could have kind of multi-level folders that were really easy to organize and the ability to link pages to other pages. Kind of like a wiki, but like way simpler. So I wanted something super easy to set up, super easy to organize, super easy to keep organized, super easy to navigate. I was going to wait a little longer before I did this video. So I have a really huge world that I'm going to keep building over probably a long period of time because like I said, I have a lot of projects in this world and the different projects are just set in really small specific locations. So I'm kind of just building the world piece by piece. I was like, oh, I should wait until I have it more filled out and you can see what like a more fully built world building Bible looks like. But then I was like, the general structure is gonna be exactly the same, just with more information in it. I'm gonna cover the information anyways. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> So I did a little screen recording of um, myself doing a little tour of my world building bible, so let's just jump into it. So welcome to my world building bible. So I world build in Microsoft OneNote. This is a huge step up for me from what I used to world build in Microsoft Word. It was just long blocks of text. I'm planning to write a lot of stories in this world. My goal was to create one fantasy world that I could write a bunch of unconnected stories in. And so I realized if I'm gonna have a bunch of different stories all set in this same world, I need a better organizational system. Because just writing endless blocks of texts in one long word document is not going to work when the information 
crosses across a ton of different stories. We've leveled up. I personally want to look for is the ability to have this kind of shelving system here where you can have folders within folders and you can also group folders. So you have this kind of multi-level table of contents where you have your general table of contents and then more specific within that and then you know within that you can create these drop down menus and you can basically create infinite drop down menus within drop down menus if you want. So I have this set up in basically four main categories in the first section of my table of contents. So the first thing I have is general, then I have my magic system, and then realms, which I have all my different realms, and then stories, because I'm working on multiple stories within this world. Let's just go through this piece by piece. We'll start with general. So the first thing that I have is the map. Now normally I actually have a more intricately labeled version of the map where I have like cities marked, but I decided to just swap it out for the simplified version for the sake of this video. I made the map in incarnate, which I really like it has like a coastline brush so it makes these like nice jagged realistic looking coastlines for you which is very nice and I splurged for the paid version because my original version of this map was too small. My world was developing off the edges of the map and I always just keep this as the first note. So after that I have this page called world features. In this page I kind of just have some notes on the general features of the world so like world there's kind of a the line between like natural forces is kind of blurred. So humans will have like sometimes animal or uh, like natural traits. The line is blurred between animal and element. So we'll see like animals that are kind of grow from the biome they're from. So like birds that grow from trees. So that's kind of just some stuff that I have in my world features notes, stuff that just applies to the world as a whole. Then I also have, um, I, I'm not going to drop down, but I have some stuff on mythical creatures that I haven't really developed because there aren't that many mythical creatures in my world because I'm just not a huge mythical creatures person, what can I say? And then I have some stuff I haven't filled out, like the planetary system and the geopolitics and stuff. I have an ideas page. That page is just random ideas pertaining to the world that I want to explore further. For example, if I have a random idea for a mythical creature, but I haven't really figured out the details yet, so it doesn't have its own page. I have a name bank. When I am naming places, I'll brainstorm 20 options for a name and then pick the one that I like the most, but then I keep all the others in the name bank so that if I need to name a place on the fly, if I need to name a person on the fly, I can just reference my name bank. Um, and then finally I have a story ideas. That's just where I put like the beginning baby seeds of possible stories that I want to explore in this world. Under my magic system, I have an overview. So, you know, I kind of have the rules, like what is my magic system based on? And so then I have an overview of all the different types of magic and then they link. So, so like a really simple one that I haven't really developed is like painted singing and dancing. So I have its own page, right? So I haven't really written much about this yet because it's like frankly a very straightforward ability. Like there's not much to say about it. It's just the ability to create colors in the air. At a certain point, this will get expanded, but I have one character so far with this ability in the world and she's like really bad at it. So I haven't really done much, but then, you know, some of them like the touch is like probably the most important type of magic in this world. I have multiple characters with the touch. It's like really, really important. It's like the foundation of where this whole idea world came from was from the touch. And so like, I have like a lot about the touch. I have like, you know, a description of what it is and, you know, possible applications of the ability. Um, and then I have like a description of the touch throughout the world. Like how is it viewed in different cultures? This is honestly something I need to expand because I've only looked at a few so far, but that is basically what my magic system note looks like. And it is definitely in the early stages. I think the magic system, I am going for a pretty soft magic system in general but I want to have a soft magic system with a lot of different types of abilities. So pop back to the map. So I have the realms arranged kind of in geographic order. So my world is a horseshoe, so I kind of have it arranged geographically starting in the southeast with Tsark, and then we go up and around and then around like this down to Zaquero, which used to be the last one. And then I added these two island realms. So that's kind of why I have it arranged that way. I mean, you could have it alphabetical, whatever. Within each realm, I definitely haven't done super deep development. Some of them I've, I've barely thought of at all. Kind of depends on where I have story set. So I'll just go to Tussark since it's the first one here. I have not really developed Tussark that much because I've not, actually I do kind of have the very beginning of, an, of a book that's gonna take place into Sark, which I'm excited about because desert, I love a fantasy desert. Under general, I have kind of the same general page for all of them, but as 
as you can see there's like missing pieces like I have not figured out what the governmental structure is here and it's also partly because in this world I I refuse to just have monarchy, 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 monarchy. I want some unique governmental structures. But I kind of have this same little general page for all of them where I just write down, you know, like the primary religion. Clearly exports haven't gone that far, the climate. And then for inspiration, the inspiration is more for the what the climate looks like. You know, this is a desert climate. And so I think it's important to, when building the culture, look at like real desert cultures and see what they have in common, especially for the more extreme environment. How do people survive in a desert? So that's something that I want to like look into and research as I'm building this culture. You know, my vision for this is again, I, I really want to do a lot of the world building for the cultures from the ground up. They can, there can be like some loose inspiration or like a loose aesthetic starting point that maybe has like a real world inspiration, but I do want to do the majority of like building the cultures from the ground up. This is like a Sahara Desert kind of vibe. And then I just have like a little description of it. You'll see in a moment, but I don't have the same tabs for every country for every realm and that's just based on what I have developed and also based on the specific culture and I'll show you some examples of that. So I can show you in religion these two realms mostly practice the same religion. I have it under Azamine, don't know why, I think that's just where I first wrote it. And so you can click on it and it takes you to Azamine. And then there's a description of the religion, some differences in, in the two realms and like how the religion is viewed. usually have all the places within shelf is like a drop down menu. So if we look at something that I've developed a little further, Metacon is somewhere that I've developed a little further because I'm planning a book set in Metacon. Metacon is like, like kind of like Central Asia, Mongolia kind of a vibe. Visual references of kind of like the geography and what it looks like. Some stuff on the geography, I have some stuff on the like government, the religion, um, it's like a form of animism. Because Meitakan is a clan based society, I have like some notes on the different clans, so far only two just because the two main characters of this project, the two clans that they're from, and then under culture, falconry is like super important to this culture. The culture is really based in falconry, it's really important, so I have like a whole page on it linking to this other, like they have like a coming of age ceremony related to falconry. Under places, like, Kashkaik is like the capital, so I just have, like write up about it. I wanted to look at this one place in the world called Sea Spire because the world building for it is a little different because it's actually a closed system. It is isolated in such a way that they only have what they have and they can't get new things. They can't obtain any new resources that they don't already have and can't within their own system generate in a renewable way, if that makes sense. My best comparison would be something like Snowpiercer. So the world building is a little more tricky and logistics based, I would say. In my Sea Spire notes, I have the same like general as everything else. You know, I have a description and history of it. Um, I have some stuff on the class structure since classes. Class is a very important part of this book. I actually have to update this because it's out of date, but I just have some stuff on how like the citizenship works because the citizenship is a really important plot point in the book. Some stuff on the government, the religion. You know, I have this breakdown of the city design. So this is huge because the city design in a closed system is so important. So I have a breakdown of the city structure and all the different levels and sections of the city, some stuff on like, you know, agriculture and how they grow food. But one thing that I have that I wanted to show you is my resource chart. I haven't finished this. This is a new thing. So I, I have to put some more thought into it. I was getting a little tripped up keeping track of what resources they have and, you know, what would be more valuable and stuff like that. Because obviously in a closed system, you can have some really weird inflation of value for certain resources if some are, you know, non-renewable when maybe in regular society they would be renewable. So I wanted to make this chart that shows the different resources, you know, so like fish, renewable, low value. Something for example like iron, can't mine more iron and so that's a non-renewable resource so the value of iron is very inflated because the only iron they have is what they have. So this has been really helpful. Um, I definitely have more research that I have to do on world building a closed system. It's definitely been a challenge beyond any world building that I've done before, even just like in the main characters mind like thinking about what she can't describe because she doesn't know what it is like she's never seen a river before right she's never seen anything outside of this one city which is a closed system so it really affects the diction you can use the metaphors you can use this has been a really helpful tool so far i've just started building it then we have stories so i have all my notes for the different stories that i'm planning i do have working titles for these but i just have 
change them to and then just some other ideas and then I have a, a page for characters because I have some orphan characters. I had some ideas for like roles of characters that I want to have that I've started to develop but I don't really know like how they fit into any kind of narrative yet. Godship is like the first main project that I'm working on that I'm like actively working on. Everything else is just like loose ideas. First off I just have my summary. Um, you know when I first got the idea I basically just wrote a plot summary like two days after I got the idea that because the I don't know entire plot art came to me in a vision which was great. Then I have an ideas section which is where I just put random story ideas or scene ideas. I have a note on a thing on the themes which I just added yesterday because I like to have a place where I can just write down. So like theme for me appears as I write. So like as I write and work on a story the theme clarifies and I feel like it's important for me to write down. Then I kind of have an outline. I use that term pretty loosely. I've talked about my six art story structure before because I have two POVs and I want it to be a relatively compact plot development. I've condensed it to five. So I just have a chart with parts, with five parts, and then like the general beats in each one, building my evolving outline here as well. So like I've been working on the first chapter and so I kind of just have been, you know, writing down the scenes in chapter one. I have some notes on the form, really quick note. So then we have scenes and snippets. So I have like a drop down menu here where I just put a bunch of different little quotes or scenes. I have this tab for plot development. Um, so just like when I have any ideas about specific aspects of a plot, I've been putting them there. So the main romance, I have like any notes about the main romance. And then finally I have character tabs. Um, I'm normally not a big character profile person, but I think because I've been doing a world building Bible, which I've never done before, it makes me want to character profile. Like I've always, kind of hated character profiles. I think they're kind of pointless. But I think because the thing about having a world building Bible is it creates this need in me to fill out all the little pieces, you know? I have this need to have full character profiles, even though I actually think character profiles are kind of useless to me. But I have been character profiling. I just have like my character profile. So like this is the protagonist, her name's Ace Liv. It's a pretty standard character profile where I just have like, you know, some general notes about her and notes about her personality and then backstory. And so that is how I've set up my world building Bible. As you can see, it still leaves much to be desired. There's still so much that I have to fill out. This is a bit unconventional in the fact that this world building Bible extends far beyond the story that I'm writing. The current story that I'm writing is focused on a very small part of the world and every story in this in this world is like that. Every single story is just set in a very small window. So I'm kind of developing the world very small window by very small window based on where the stories take place. The world that I have laid out, you know, with all these different realms, it's so much faster than any specific story that I'm telling. It's gonna be a long time that I would like to write in this world and explore different stories in the world. And so as I keep developing little pieces of the world across different stories, then the world building by will get flushed out. And so I really wanted to set myself up for success from the start and have this structure that as the story and the world grew, the framework would be there, you know? I, I didn't want to get to a point where my world and story would kind of outgrow the structure that I had set up. I wanted to create a structure that no matter what point I'm at, from the point where I have basically nothing and I'm starting from brand new to maybe 10 years from now, when I have developed so many more aspects of this world, I can have the same world building Bible and it will just be like nice and organized from the beginning. You know, normally I'm a very chaotic planner, but I kind of realized in this case, I need to change my chaotic ways because there's just gonna be so much information, like more information probably than I've ever had for any project, given that it's so many different projects all taking place within the same world. And so I really just wanted to create a world building Bible that was really easy to navigate, really easy to find information, really easy to move through. I feel like this has really worked so well. It's not overwhelming to someone like me who is actually kind of opposed to planning an organization. It feels like the right balance between really organized and really approachable. So yeah, that is how I organize my world building Bible. So that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are a world builder, I'd love to know how you set up your world building Bible, what programs or tools you use. If there are any great world building tools that you use, please do mention them in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.